Star Trek, it's not just a phase. We're going to be talking about simple harmonic motion and phase angle, and plus going over some of the more detailed equations. So let's remind ourselves yet again, if we have something that's undergoing simple harmonic motion, let's say it's like a, a mass on a spring. Remember that this, we say x equals 0. Remember it moves to the right and to the left. And this one here, we'll say x equals uh, x0. Right, which is your maximum value. I just want to make sure you understand this. This is like your maximum uh, amplitude or your displacement. Okay, we've got an equation now uh, that defines the motion for a simple harmonic motion in terms of the displacement. Okay, so it goes like this. It goes x equals x0 sine omega t. Actually, I should make my omega clearer. Uh, omega t, and then we say plus phi, and that's the new thing. Okay, so let's start defining our variables. T is the time. Well, that's going to be in seconds. Okay, we have X is displacement from equilibrium. That'll be in meters. We've got the amplitude or the maximum displacement here. That's X zero. So that's also in meters. We've got the angular frequency. Remember, that's in radians per second. And finally, now we've got this phase angle, and this will be something in radians. And this one's kind of weird, okay? So that's why we're going to talk about this one right here now. That's the key thing here. That's why I put down the Star Trek joke here. So let's consider, first of all, what does a graph of sine normally look like? A graph of like, uh, if we have x, for example, versus t here, a sine graph goes like this, at least if I do like the one period of a sine graph. Keep in mind, it keeps going, of course. But let's just say it would be like this. Um, so that's the really key thing here. And what's going to happen is this. this phi, this phase angle, is going to be like how far left or right, you know, is this, so you have to imagine like a graph like this uh, being there in theory, and then you have to imagine and you kind of pick it up and you actually move it, so you move it left or right. So basically this, you know, moving left or right, that's going to be my phase angle, that's going to be my phi. Okay, so phi is going to be how I take my graph and I basically shift it left or right. Okay, so a phase angle is something that where there's a shift left or right. Okay, we're taking the whole graph and moving it. And remember, um, we're going to assume that when t equals 0, x equals 0. Okay, so x equals 0 when t equals 0. At least as far as this graph right here, uh, that's the way we've got it set up. See, if you put a t equals 0 here, uh, well, sine of 0 is 0. 0 times anything is still 0, so that means x is 0. So this is just important to, to recognize this little piece right here. And there we go. So let's remind ourselves about phase angle here. We've got this phi, which is your phase angle, and that's going to be measured in radians. So we're going to go a little bit deeper now. I'm going to show you how it actually works because it's, it's a bit wacky at first if you haven't seen it before. All right, so we've got phi is our phase angle in radians. And remember what one complete cycle is. One complete cycle is 2 pi radians. This is a piece you need to know here. I think that's the, the key thing here. Because then we can look at different examples. And let's actually look at these things and what they're going to be. So we're going to start off, for example, with what if the phase angle is 0? Well, then we're just going to use our equation. And remember the equation. It goes, uh, maybe I'll write it down over here. Uh, remember, it goes x equals x0 sine omega t plus phi. Now, if that's the case, and you know what I'll do? I'll copy this right here, because then I can always start off with this one right here, and I can paste it later. So if I want to look at this right here, well, what if phi is actually 0? If it's, that's the case, then we just have x equals x0 sine omega t. In other words, there is no phase shift. If that's the case, then this graph just looks like a sine graph. So I'll just do the first period of a sine graph, just this right here. Keep in mind, it keeps going. It keeps going back and forth, but just to show you. And the skill I want to really instill in you, and you've, if you didn't already know this, is we can take this whole thing and split up the cycle into a bunch of parts. So if this whole thing, if one whole cycle is 2 pi radians, that means I'm going to label this 2 pi. If that's 2 pi, half of that must be pi. If I take half of that, then that must be pi over 2. Then if I count, if I count 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, this must be 3 pi over 2. There we go, split up into four even pieces. I could split it up, of course, into more. I could do lots more pieces if I really wanted to. But, you know, this is good enough. So this is what this right here would look like.
So let's do more practice now when we have phi that's not equal to zero, and let's see what we have here. So I'm going to try to do that. Uh, my little cut and paste didn't work, so that's okay. I'll just write this down again. So x equals x zero sine omega t plus phi. All right, let's deal with what if phi is pi over 4 radians? What? Well, let's just write down what we get then. So we have x equals x0 sine omega t, and we say plus pi over 4. That's going to be our equation then we're going to use. See, we've just, we've just put this in. Just like over here, it'll be easy, right? It'll just be x equals x0, and it'll be sine omega t, and this time plus pi. Now what I've done is I've given you this graph right here uh, as a reference. So this one right here, for example, um, uh, this is just like what the regular graph of one period of sine looks like. Remember, this is 2 pi. Remember, this right here is pi. This right here then must be pi over 2. And 1, 2, this must be 3 pi over 2. And by the way, I'm going to do the same thing here. So do you notice a lot of this is just a matter of bookkeeping, so to speak. You just split it into 2. I go 1, 2, 3, pi over 2. Now all I gotta do is figure out what to do here. So if I want pi over 4, where's that? Well, unfortunately, pi over 4 is actually one more split. Like, where's pi over 4? That's halfway from 0 to pi over 2. That's half of it. So this is pi over 4. And if that's the case, then, if you notice, then, uh, then I've got one, to, I've gotta do that half, and that half, and that half. So really, what I've got to do, if you remember, um, depending on which math class you take, you might recognize that doing a plus pi over 4 means you want to go left by pi over 4. That's really what you want to do here. Left by pi over 4. Now there's another way to look at it. Uh, if we do pi over 4, well, how many, what fraction is that? If you look at, there's like, I've split up my whole period into 8 pieces. So I've gone left by, you know, 1 over 8. So just to write that one down, this is left by 1 over 8 of a cycle. What does that really mean? That means I've got to take every point from this one right here and go left by 1 over 8 of a cycle. Now what's a whole cycle? Remember, it's 2 pi. So that means I'm going to do 2 pi times 1 over 8, which is just 2 pi over 8, and that's why I end up with pi over 4. So that's how this one here works. So that means I'm going to take each of these points. So I'll take this point right here. I'll take this point right here at the top. I'll take the middle. I'll take the bottom. And I'll take the top here. And each of these has to go left by pi over 4. This is going to be the sort of key idea here. Okay, so this one here, left by pi over 4. Why is it left? If you remember uh, from your math class, if you do a plus pi over 4, uh, if you remember transformations, if you had that in your math class, then that means it goes left. Just like this one right here, for example, will go left by pi. We could actually write that already here, too. Okay, so this one here will be left by pi. Okay, so if I wanted to do that, of course I could. But let's go focus on the first one. So what can we say about this first one here? That means I'm going to take every single point up here. I'm going to shift it to the left by pi over 4. And pi over 4 is just one of these little tick marks, just one of these. So that means this point right here is going to go left by pi over 4. So now it's there. This point's going to go left. This point's going to go left. And this point's going to go left. That means my graph will look something like, I mean, I'm not perfect at drawing these right here, but something like this, and then down like this, and then up like this, and then maybe a little bit like that. So do you see this whole thing has been shifted to the left? Right? So this one here, I can say this. Everything's been left by pi over 4 each of these points. Now this one here, same idea. Um, here I could say, oh, if I'm going by pi, how much is pi? In this case here, if I've split this up into four pieces, I've gone left by, let's see, pi is two out of four. So I've gone, you know, left by two out of four of a cycle. Now, of course, what's two out of four? That's just one over two. And if I consider that, remember, I'm always doing a fraction of the whole thing, so two pi. Well, I want half of that. That's why it gives me pi. So that's, I'm just trying to explain how you can, you can look at fraction of a cycle as well as the phase. So if I want every single point then to be left by pi, that means I've got to go, uh, well, how much is pi? Pi is two of these tick marks. So that means I'm going to take this point right here and bring it left by two. It goes here. I'm going to take this point, right. Uh, maybe I'll do this point right here. I'll do it left by two. It goes over here. This point right here will go left by two. It goes here. And if you look at this one here, then it's going to go like this right here, yes. 
But also, of course, it's going to continue. So it's going to you know, go like this and so on. So everything here technically has gone left. I mean, it's harder to see it over here because technically there was a dotted line here that went left. So I'm going to maybe draw it over here and say, hey, look, this one right here went left like this right here by pi. So everything went left by pi. And over here, see, everything went left by pi over 4. Hope that makes sense. I know it's a little bit wacky. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to. How often does one make jokes about IB physics with pendulums? Periodically. <laughs> so we're going to talk about velocity now. And there's an equation for it. Actually, there's two of them. I just, just in case uh, you'd like to see where it comes from. Uh, now, it depends on which math class you have. Uh, you don't always have to know uh, this. I just, I just want to show it to you. Because I think it's kind of nice. It ties together calculus. If you've done chain rule derivatives, uh, then that will be explained. If you haven't done those, don't worry. Uh, I'll just show you this right here. So this piece right here, velocity. Now, we remember from physics, we say velocity is the change in position over time. So we say dx dt. And if you remember how to do calculus, then we can say this is d dt, like this right here, of your equation for x, which is x0 times sine of omega t plus phi. Now, if you remember how to do derivatives, then by hand, like especially if you remember how to do chain rule, uh, what do you do? You do the derivative of the outside with the original inside. So that means I'm going to end up with, and I'll actually this will be your equation here. I'll just show you where it comes from. So this one right here, let's see, it'll be derivative of sine becomes a cos. Uh, so it becomes you know x0 cos omega t plus uh, phi. But then we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is omega. So we have omega x0 times cos of omega t plus phi. So actually, I'll just write it down. So it's omega x0 times a cosine of omega t plus phi. Now, did you have to know this derivation? Not at all. I just wanted to show you where it came from because uh, here, uh, I don't know, I just think it's nice to see it. So we have another version as well, which goes like this. V equals, and it's plus or minus omega times the square root of, and it's x0 squared minus x squared. That's another one. So basically it depends on what you're given, and just use whichever equation works best for you. Now what are all the variables? Well, t is the time in seconds, v is the velocity, x is the displacement from equilibrium, x0 is the amplitude of the maximum displacement, we got omega is the angular frequency, and phi is the phase difference. So that's kind of nice to know. And now we have an equation now that's not in your data booklet, but it's still really important to understand how to get to it. So there's a couple of ways you could get there. Uh, one of them is if you took your equation for v here and you did the derivative of that with respect to time, that's because acceleration is you know dv dt. And so if you do that, of course, then a derivative of a cosine becomes a sine, but it becomes a minus, and you end up with an omega squared in front of it. That's one way. But I'd rather show you a, a simpler way. Let's just start with that equation. Remember the equation for um, acceleration. This is one you get from your data booklet, which goes a equals minus omega squared x. And just remember what x is. x, we have an equation for that, right? x is just, uh, so I'll just say, oh, that means a equals, well, it's minus omega squared. And what's x? x is x0 sine omega t plus phi. And there we go. That's our equation. So do you see, actually, that was really easy. So just in case you need to get to it, in case you need an equation for uh, the acceleration, that's actually nice to know. There we go. That's everything we needed.